Hi, this is Ann Ellipson with the Department of Public Instruction, Office of Academic Support. I'm here today to provide a webinar on the 2019-2020 consolidated application, in particular on the transfer flexibility within the consolidated application for federal funds. All districts must complete a consolidated application each year to apply and access their federal title funding. For the 2019-2020 school year, the department has created a series of webinars for each of the topics within the consolidated application. As mentioned earlier, this presentation is specific to the transfer flexibility. Under ESSA, provisions are provided for transfer. This allows districts the ability to transfer funds from one federal program to another. This flexibility allows districts to target those funds to their unique needs and to address those needs as aligned to those other federal program initiatives. Districts that wish to participate in the transfer flexibility must complete specific sections of the consolidated application, and we'll walk through those sections today. In ESSA, all districts are eligible to participate in transfer. However, only districts that generate an allocation can transfer funds to that particular program. So for instance, if a district does not receive a Title IV allocation, it cannot transfer any funding to the Title IV program. So to reiterate, districts can only transfer funds into those programs for which they receive a federal allocation and an amount is generated. This visual provides a little bit more information on the flexibility that exists with transferability. On the screen, you'll see four funding pots, Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV. The transfer flexibility allows a district to use its Title II Part A funds put them into a transfer budget to then provide supports towards a Title I program, or a Title III program, or a Title IV program. Likewise, for the Title IV grant, districts have the flexibility to use those funds, put them into a transfer account that would then support the programs and initiatives for Title III, Title I, or Title II. Please note that districts cannot take funds from Title I and cannot take funds from Title III. The only funds that may be transferred <laughs> towards other programs and initiatives would be Title II and Title IV. Another important element to note is that once funds are transferred, they become subject to the requirements of that particular program. So for instance, the Title IV program has a requirement that if an allocation is over $30,000, a needs assessment must be in place, and there's additional spending parameters. So if a district has an allocation of, let's say, $20,000 for Title IV, and elects to transfer Title II funds towards that Title IV program, and brings that allocation amount or the intended amount of that program above 30000 then those other requirements come into play. Districts that want to transfer funds must indicate it on the consolidated application, in particular in the transfer section. Also, all districts that have non-public schools within their boundaries must consult with those non-public schools before the transfer is requested. If a district were to transfer all of its funding towards a Title I program, that non-public equitable service would then be provided under that Title I program as well. So non-public schools would receive the services in the same bucket or fashion in which the district is transferring its funds. Now moving on to the consolidated application. <coughs> On the consolidated application, there's a section that says transfer. If a district is choosing to transfer its funds, it will select the aerial button that says summary of transferability. Then on this page, the district will check it out and put the corresponding allocation amount in the taken from field 
of the application. This allows you and allows the budget triggers to, uh, to um, accept the district's budgeting of funding into a transfer budget. Please note that the column that says transfer totals, that will be automatically calculated once the transfer budgets are completed in the activities section of the application. So once you build that budget, your transfer total will populate. Amounts cannot be entered into that transfer total subsection as it feeds in from a different part of the consolidated application. So once you indicate that you want to transfer, you'd move to the next section of the application, which is activities. Now in the activities, there will be budgets that are pre-populated for you to complete. They are transfer title 1, 2A, 3, 4, or 5. So you would obligate your funds accordingly into those budgets. Now the department is planning to provide additional guidance on how districts can streamline their budgets. So if a district does choose to transfer, it's suggested that they transfer all of the programs or all of those funds that they have the flexibility to transfer. I'm going to show you in a couple slides why we believe that this flexibility is important um, and why we're recommending that you transfer all of those program funds for really having a streamlined budget and tracking process. In this illustration, you'll see that there's allocations that were generated for Title I, Title II, and Title IV. I did not include an allocation for Title III. That's very few districts across North Dakota. So here we have four allocations that were generated. In this scenario, the district would choose that yes, it wanted to transfer, and it would enter the allocation amounts for its Title II Part A program as well as for its Title IV Part A program. This puts both of those allocations into one transfer budget. So when it comes to tracking funds and ledgers, the district would have one Title I Part A ledger to track and one broad transfer ledger to track. This is the recommended way for districts to streamline their funds and their budgeting to track fewer ledgers. What we have been seeing is that districts have sometimes unnecessary multiple budgets that they have to track. So in this scenario, the district would receive an allocation for Title I, an allocation for Title II, and an allocation for Title IV. However, the district would keep its Title I budget separate, keep its Title II budget separate, and these Title IV funds they put into a transfer budget to go towards Title II activities. Well, then there's three budgets that have to be tracked, a Title I budget, a Title II budget, and a transfer budget. Now, if the district would have put two and four together, it would have two ledgers to track, that Title I and transfer. Unfortunately, here the district chose Title I, a transfer budget, and still has to track its Title II budget. So the department highly recommends that if you're going to transfer, we put two and four into that transfer bucket so that you have that one less ledger to track. We do recognize that there are times where a district might need to intentionally track these budgets separately. So in this scenario, a district receives a Title I allocation, a Title II allocation, and a Title IV allocation. However, the district's Title II allocation has been established and does not make sense to move to the transfer section, and the Title IV allocation is actually going to complement Title I activities now. So there are districts that will have a Title I budget, a Title II budget, and then a transfer budget. And it can be justified, but there could be additional flexibility should the Title II and IV budget be put into one transfer. We've updated our guidance on the consolidated application. It's available and posted on the department's website as well as the help screens within the consolidated application. We ask you to review this information carefully because it has a wealth of information. There's explanations for the sections of the consolidated application, different information on transfer. It has object codes with descriptions which have been updated to better align to the ND farms. There's tracking guidance as well as general fiscal policies and information on budget revisions. 
please note that for all federal funds, the costs must be reasonable and necessary. Anything charged with federal title funds needs the amount of funds need to be considered, and we need to ensure that they're reasonable, necessary, and allocable to that grant. So it makes sense for the allowable activities of that program. Also, all activities really need to be supported and within that consolidated application um, and aligned to your data and to your needs. There's evidence-based requirements for all federal title programming, including Title I, II, III, and IV. So all activities with federal funds, including those that are done through the transfer program, must be supported by evidence and demonstrated to be effective. If the evidence isn't already displayed through uh, a study, for instance, then districts need to be prepared to show how they will track the information to then justify the return on investment of those federal title funds. As mentioned earlier, if a district chooses to transfer, it suggested that they transfer all of those funds from the particular programs that are allowed to be transferred. So in particular, Title II and Title IV. Put them both together in a transfer budget. This allows the district to eliminate having multiple budgets to track and provides increased flexibility in the future should budget revisions be needed. If you have questions on transfer, the transfer flexibility, staff in the department are welcome to help you. And in particular, if you have questions on the transfer flexibility and some budget guidance, you can give us a call. I'm Ann Ellison, the Director of Academic Support, and my colleague Jean Gratz will also be happy to help you. Thanks, and have a good day. Bye-bye.